call it a settlement of a masquerading as a law. How do you respond to that? We have not been influenced by the arbitration matters which are going on in the various courts. As you would understand, it has taken about six years uh, for the arbitration matter to reach its logical conclusion. And one can imagine how much more time would it have taken if we had followed the process of judicial courts. And one doesn't even know as to what the decision would have been in the various judicial courts uh, if the matter had gone. It could also have gone in our favor because we have taken this view that taxation is a sovereign right. It's not a matter to be in the bilateral investment treaties. It is not a matter of arbitration. So I think it is our own decision that we have taken where we want to give stability and certainty to taxation rates uh, and for the foreign investors who are now actually looking at diversifying their uh, supplies all over the world. And they're looking India as one of the major candidates. And we have a lot of candidates who are coming here. So it will provide them that additional comfort that if they come here, there is this commitment of the government. Since the scrapping of, uh, of the tax law, have you heard from either Vodafone or CAN? Have they got it in touch? Uh, is there a sense that they're willing to drop the cases uh, in the international tribunals? I think uh, the fact is that there are some informal discussions going on. I would not like to discuss them in the public domain, but overall the uh, answer to your question is yes. From your perspective, though, do you, do you think there is a need for a relief package? It would make no sense for the, for the government of India to come up and say that we give this relief and the companies say that this relief is not enough and we are not able to survive. So I think it needs a very interactive session between the two parties. And I'm sure the government will find a solution because we have also said that uh, we started with a very large number of telecom operators in this country, but now there are only three major uh, players that are left out. And it is important that these three major players in the private sector, there is one in the public sector too, actually continue to function to provide competition and in the long run, that is what is suitable for the country and for everybody. Secretary Bajaj, this retro tax law is a long pending issue. With that being resolved, do you see investor confidence in India being boosted in a significant way, in a meaningful way? Do you see investments flowing into the country now? I'm sure this will definitely have that effect. And I also say this because in my interactions with the investors, especially the foreign investors, this always continued to be one of the sore points that they had in their conversations with me. And I'm sure they are very happy with this retrospective taxation having gone by. And the solution also that has been found by the government is not a solution which is giving a solution only to the companies that have gone for arbitration. This is a solution even for companies for whom we have raised demands and the uh, sword was hanging on their head. So having said that, at this juncture, are there more measures that can be taken to make India a more tax-friendly destination? If there are any such proposals, as I said, we'll be very positive and look at it very positively. Let me say this very categorically from being the revenue secretary, where the general impression is that he's only interested in revenues. I'm interested in the economy. So if the economy does well, the revenues will automatically do well. But it's not something that I don't want to give up revenues if it helps the economy. If it helps the economy, I'm okay to give up it.